Okay, so so Charlie Ehrlich is connected to the DeCavalcanti. He's Genovese. Oh, D Genovese, because the New Jersey. He's Jewish. The Jews couldn't be made into the mafia. So he's Genovese, Meyer Lansky crew. In his story, he talks about Vince Sinalo, who they used to call Jimmy Blue Eyes, who is very close to Meyer Lansky. Meyer Lansky, they became the Genovese. That was Vito Genovese, Meyer Lansky, Lucky Luciano. These are the OG mobsters. Murder, Inc. A lot of those guys were Jewish, okay? They killed Dutch Schultz, Chuck the Bug Workman, right? There was a... The Jews and the Italians created the mafia, okay? That's fact, okay? And even Lucky Luciano said, always trust Meyer, always listen to Meyer. They couldn't be made because they had this racial thing against each other, but Meyer Lansky like never went to jail. He lived to in, be in his 80s. Joey Ippolito worked for Meyer Lansky. They ran the speedboats, Don Arano, Ben Kramer, Bobby Sassenti, um, Sal Magluda, all those cocaine cowboy stuff, that's O.J. Simpson. You just can't connect the dots right away. So, um, but staying with the night of the murders, so O.J. is chipping the golf balls and he flips out. He's like, get in the Bronco, we're going to Nicole's. Why Why didn't O.J. just pay pay the debt that, so you're saying Nicole owed a debt, um, Charlie Ehrlich wanted to collect on a debt. Joey Ippolito sends Ehrlich as his muscle and enforcer and goes, Go get a bunch of money from O.J. Simpson from for Faye, Nicole, and Keith Z. Okay. That's in the confession. They about name them in the confession, in the screenplay. Charlie says, I got bosses, you got bosses, Joey needs his money. And what kind of money are we talking about? Like 80 grand. They say 50,000 back then. You you crank it up, it's 82.5. Okay. And that could have been, O.J. could have easily just paid that. And he should have. <laughs> Yeah. He fucked up. Like and OJ knows he did. That's why I told the the bounty hunter, uh, his bondsman, <clears throat> he said I should have just got on my plane that night. Because he asked him in Vegas. They had to revoke OJ's bail. And he had to come back and the guy tells the story of the A and E special and he goes, I should have just got on my plane. Okay, so according to the, this theory that you've uh, you know figured out, OJ decides to go to Nicole Brown's uh condo with Charlie with Charlie mm -hmm. to collect. Not to collect, to mess with them. OJ's the millionaire. I've said this in my other interviews and I'm not trying to repeat stuff, but the key elements to your audience may not be a crossover audience. When it's not, it's an extortion. Let's think of it like the mafia first. The mob versus gangs are a little different on how they extort people, okay? A mafia extortion would be, I fronted you a bunch of coke, and your girlfriend, your ex-wife, right? Her too, and her friend Faye, and Keith Z. Faye and Resnick. Guy, yes. And the people at Re Mezzaluna. Now, it doesn't mean Joey and Charlie gave you cocaine. It means their guys gave it to you too, right? Now, who's the alpha male? Joey Ippolito. He's running the show. He had people murdered. This guy was the devil. Okay, I kind of respect him a little too, but this guy was basically like the devil. Okay. Ehrlich's the muscle. He's the fall guy, right? Joey wants his money. Just pay it up, OJ. You know, we got bosses. You got bosses, you know. And he's trying to he's trying to plead with them. Like, and all OJ had to really say was, to be honest, is I'll take care of it. Tell Joey, chill him out. But what does OJ do instead? He goes and catches two bodies. Now, what would have been the smarter thing to do there? How would you have handled something like that? Well, OJ definitely had the resources to just pay whatever it was, whether it was 20, 30, He got 50 grand. 50, uh, even if it was 100. Who cares? So, so You want to go to jail? You want to murder your children's wife? You want to go kill a boy who was in the wrong place at the wrong time, who had nothing to do with anything? So at this, at this time, when they decide to go to Nicole's condo, he still has a flight that he's going to catch. The limo's on the way. The limo's on the way, and he decides, all right, I'm going to go to, to Nicole's house with Charlie. So so they pull up in, in the white Bronco. And what's OJ known for at USC? What he set a record in? Uh, high, the what? four by relay. Oh, the, the... Yeah, speed. So in his head, I'll go race over there. <laughs> but they're not doing it on foot, though. They're, <laughs> they're driving over there. I just there. want to break some... 
Um, what, Levity, if that's the word. What's the di- um, the distance between the Rockingham Mansion and Bu- Bundy Drive? Five minutes. Okay. I've driven it. Okay. So they go over there, and they get out the car. What do they do? Knock on the door, or do, are they? Do they see Nicole and Ron in the front already? So okay. So this is how I've told this story this way. I wasn't there. Okay. I'm not God. I don't know everything Ehrlich says, how truthful he is, right? We don't know how truthful OJ is, okay? But if I was to mesh them all together, all the Charlie's version on the tape, Charlie's version in the screenplay, Charlie's manuscript, his notes, OJ's book, OJ's interviews, over, I've seen every interview OJ's ever done. I've m- memorized them almost. And then the LAPD has a theory as Correct. well. So let's combine them all together. Okay, let's mesh them all together. They pull out front first in the Bronco. They have to know if she's home. Okay, they're not in the back yet. Now that road's very narrow, Bundy. You can't really park on that street. They pull up and they scope it out for a second. Okay, this is about 10. This would technically be 1025. I'll give you the minute. It's 1025. They scope it for a second and they pull around to the back alley. OJ tells you he parks by a fence on the left side. There's a fence. I've seen it. There's a, there's like a driveway that kicks out on the left side. I believe he parked by this fence. What would be the cross street off of Bundy on that? If you remember it's Bundy and Dorothy and San Vicente, it's like a square. Dorothy is the road that Ron Goldman parks his car on where there's a, this big tree. They call it. He parks on Dorothy. So Dorothy and Bundy is where she lives. Now, when they go to the back alley, they go behind the, the condo and they park in the alley. It's quiet. It's dead silent. And OJ and Charlie sit in that Bronco and say, what's going on? OJ pulls a knife out that he's taken out of his house. And Charlie supposedly, Charlie's like, what are you doing? Like, Charlie's not there to murder someone. That's how he tells his story too is, what are you doing, dude? You're putting the burglar cap on. You got the gloves on. He's like, you look like a psycho. Give me the knife. So OJ tells you in his book, Charlie took the knife. What they're doing is they're trying to confuse you that there's only one knife. There's actually two. Charlie has a knife on him too. Mob guys carry knives and guns. Okay. So he says, Charlie took the knife. So I go into the alley and I look And I see there's candles and I hear music. So now OJ's telling you he's stalking Nicole, right? How does he get in the back? Oh, if you just give it a little nudge, it would open. That's not true. He actually stole her keys. OJ had her key. I found this out later because she she told her friend, oh, my key's missing to my house. OJ took her key, okay? To stalk her. That's what his thing was. He used to stalk her. He used to watch her have sex with other men. He watched Keith Z do this through the window. It's a famous story. So as I go in, I'm looking around and he tells you in his Judith Regan interview, I hear, I see candles. I think she wanted to keep her overhead down. I hear music's on. And when I'm there, a guy shows up and that's Ron Goldman. Now, this is where we're going to, where's Charlie during this? Okay. Is Charlie out front seeing Ron Goldman come in? I don't know. Is Charlie still sitting in the Bronco while OJ's in there by himself? Maybe. Or did they come in together? Now, when OJ comes in, he says, well, this guy showed up. I believe Nicole and Ron are already there. This is through my investigation. I think they're already there. When OJ comes through the back with Ehrlich, he tries to say Charlie followed him in. I don't think he followed him in. I believe OJ and Charlie come in there through like two bulls of China shop through the back gate. They want to see what's up. They're going to bang on Nicole's door. This guy just showed up to my, my effing house, right? You fucked up. You guys pay him. You know what I mean? Like one of these kind of weird, super awkward situation. And I believe Ron Goldman's there talking to Nicole and they're out by the door and the door's wide open. They're standing in the doorway. They're not inside the house. Ron never goes in. So the evidence suggests they're talking by the front door when they show up. Now, from there, you can ask me a question right from here, but that's what I believe. The Broncos parked, lights off, killed engine. They go inside. There's Goldman talking. He's holding a white envelope, which has Judita's glasses in it. The mom, they call her Judita, German name. 
Okay, they call her Judith, but OJ, could, they call her Judita. He's holding this envelope. What? What's going on? Do they think it's drugs? I don't know. And OJ tells you in his book, he says to Goldman, I heard all you guys are dealing on the side. What are you doing here? So it's this super awkward situation. Ehrlich's there. OJ says Ehrlich's there. OJ, we got Goldman trapped. I'm blocking him from the rear. Ehrlich's blocking him from the front. Like he, 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 OJ fluctuates with like between the book, the interview. So no one fully knows exactly, but I'm just giving you like the investigative. They're outside. Nicole's barefoot. She's holding a menu in her hand, like she's either ordering takeout or something. They find the menu under the, like it blows under the fence. She's not wearing shoes. She comes out to let him in. They say the gate's broken. So he, when he buzzes it, she has to come out. So how does going over there to bother her or to agitate her over a debt turn into a full-scale homicide? Well, let's put ourselves in OJ's mindset right here. The limo's coming. He's supposed to get on a plane. Why is he even over there? Why? Nicole is not his wife. They're divorced. If a guy showed up, a young, good-looking guy, it doesn't mean they're hooking up. There's no evidence that they ever slept together. People tried to say all this. There's no evidence of that. She knew, she knew Ron. She hung out with him twice with other friends, too. There were two other friends of Ron Goldman. Okay. They barely knew each other. So you're saying there was no sexual relationship? No. Yeah, I was thinking that because if there was a sexual relationship between Ron and Nicole, maybe Nicole would have just invited him inside. Right. They're, they're talking at the front door. Right. And he apparently came from the Mezzaluna restaurant yeah. to return whatever, with yeah. his glasses or something. He was going out with Stuart Tanner, his friend. His birthday was coming up. He was supposed to meet him out at the El Cantina, whatever they call this place. And he was dressed nice. He had these like stylish white boots on. He wasn't planning on hooking up with Nicole. He was meeting his friend in like 20 minutes. Plus uh, Nicole had her two kids inside. Yes. And was this a two story? Um, yeah, it's pretty big. So They're upstairs asleep. They're, how? how and, and, and for OJ, and again, it's like, OJ, how do you know they're asleep? It's only 1030. You go over there like a bull in a china shop, like a wild man. But you could, if you're, if you're OJ, you might see this young, handsome guy and just assume, oh, they must be involved. Sure, and it sets him off like a time bomb. Yeah. He's already so mad at Joey. He's mad at Ehrlich. It's, he's got to get on a red-eye flight. He's already agitated. Ehrlich's pissed off. Joey's on the run. He walked off Pensacola. He's like a fugitive. And that's why I believe he needed the cash because I think he was like he was on the run for a year. They didn't find him until December of that year. He literally was on the run. He flipped informant. It was FBI informant. He was a rat. His brother said he was a rat. So he's not, he's in LA, but they don't know where he is. Okay. So I think he says, go get my money. I need the quick cash. Go extort OJ. He has no allegiance to him, man, to be honest. Mob guys, they don't have allegiance to some black athlete that he's been blowing his coke for free for six months or however. Supposedly they knew each other for years. Okay. But okay, to answer your question, we have four angry people in a small dark space. No. That place was tiny. They called a killing cage. What was the name of the uh, the guy that Nicole did have sex with that OJ was aware of? Keith Lomswitch. Keith. How how much time prior had Nicole been involved with this guy Keith that OJ was aware of? Keith was the manager of Mezzaluna of all three of them, Beverly Hills, Brentwood, and Aspen. He met Nicole skiing in 1992, the beginning of 92. So Keith had known her about a year and a half, almost, is that two years? It's almost like two and a half years total, but they didn't talk for a while at the end. But Keith was the first real boyfriend, sort of, that OJ knew about. And that's why he shows up at the house, shakes his hand. He's given Nicole a massage and he shows up and, and Keith's like, oh my God, I thought he was going to kill me. I know Keith. I've spoke to him many times. Wasn't one of the 911 calls and you hear OJ that Nicole made, you hear OJ in the back yelling yes. and you're, you're having sex with... with That's 93. That's Cato's there. That's at Gretna Green before she moves into Bundy. Is OJ referring to Keith as, as the guy she's messing around with? That's what's so weird. So, okay. So when he yells, I don't want hookers and drugs around my kids. What he's talking about is, this is just, this story is just so crazy, this whole case. So Keith Z 
was fiancéed. He had a fiance. I won't say her name because she's litigious. <laughs> and she was married to Larry Elder. Okay. So someone can figure it out. White she woman. Was a prostitute for Heidi Fleiss. She was known as this, and she was busted. Okay. I've spoke to her before. I tried to see if she would help out in any way. She, you can't make this up. She plays a body double for Anna Nicole Smith on the movie Naked Gun 33 and a third, where OJ's on the set. Remember, he's Norwood or whatever he is on it. She goes up to OJ. This is the night of that call. This is October 93. She walks up to OJ and goes, oh, yeah, you know, you know, Keith is, uh, that's my fiance. Keith used to sleep with your, your, um, your ex-wife. And he's like, what? Who are you? She looks like Anna because she's blonde. She's playing the double, right? She sets OJ off like a time bomb. He drives straight from the set, straight to Nicole's house, and knows that she's a prostitute and into drugs. And that's why he yells at her, I don't want this. They threw a party for her. Nicole threw a party for Keith and her as to get engaged. So you can't even make this up. And that's what OJ's yelling about. He's yelling about her. I don't want these prostitutes and the drugs around my kids. And he's slamming the door. And, Will you just get out of here, OJ? He's, he's back again. That's based on her. That's based on the set of Naked Gun. And no one ever knew 